Hey, uh, recently I posted a song that I said was super catchy. It was produced by Alan Day from Four Years Strong, and it's from a band called Palettes. Um, it's awesome. So uh, people were asking me about it, and there's actually a really cool story to this song. Uh, this was produced and tracked by this dude, Hector, who actually went through my mentoring program, and he went full time since he did the mentoring program, which first of all is like the world's best feeling for me, right? I love this stuff, like just to help people become better engineers, and then to see them take what I know at least in part and then go out into the world and like make more awesome music is just like warm fuzzies all over. Anyway, so it was like a really full circle moment for me. And I got to master something that Hector produced for a really cool band that my dude Alan mixed and then I'm mastering. And then I got all this feedback on Instagram about how catchy it is. So I just thought I'd walk through this master. It's really not an overly complicated master whatsoever. Um, and that's a testament to the mix and to the composition, but I still think it's worth walking through. Okay, so let's go to the bridge here. and. You might notice, like if we scroll out, you'll see that I have limited or just clip gain down all of these tracks. Mostly that's because um, this plugin, this first plugin, I love for boosting subs and I love for boosting air. Um, in this case, I just boosted subs with it. Um, it's really touchy when it comes to peaking, it peaks quickly. So a lot of times when I'm pushing things into the Mog EQ4, I have to kind of limit what's going in before I do any boosting. Actually, there's another plugin I think that will help us understand why I'm making this move. Let me bypass my EQ curves here and we'll sort of be able to see what we're hearing here. It's all the same shit, just okay, so that's kick here. Um, and snare fundamentals like right here. It's all the same oh, sorry, snare fundamentals here. And we can see both of these, right? So watch here for kick, watch here for snare. It's all the same shit, but notice we kind of slope off a little bit quicker. I don't know if you've looked at this stuff <laughs> clearly as much as I have, but I wanted a little bit more sub. So I went right for my favorite sub adder and it just has a sub band. I think it starts at 10 Hertz, which we can't hear, but it just, it just feels nice when we push this in. It's only 1.5 dB. So we'll put that in now. It's all the same shit, just another it's cool. These are going to be like a lot of subtle changes, but they add up. All right. Next on the list, is this giant GUI. Um, I'm doing the inverse here. So I'm going to 10K. So up here is where you're gonna select your frequency. Um, and this is a shelf, as we can see here. And you can select your decibels per octave. I'm keeping this really like tame at six decibels per octave. And I'm only pushing less than three dB. So this is gonna add up here in this area, just a little bit. So we're essentially, we're opening up the mix, right? It's like adding a little bit of rumble, a little bit of that club sub. And then up here, we're adding some sheen stuff. It's all the same shit, just another blindness. It's not the way. I know, it's subtle. We're, it's gonna be less subtle soon. Again, it's a testament to how good the mix is. Um, after that, we've got one. If you know me, you know I love Greg Wells. Oh, and now with the new Waves update. I know hotly contested plugin company at the moment, but um, I'm just using 7.9% of this. A lot of times I like pushing this plugin where I'm just barely getting a little tickle here on the gain reduction meter. It's all the same shit, just another it's not the way. It looks like this time I didn't even get it. Let's see, let's push it a little bit more. Yeah, I really like this plugin. My friend Zane calls it the can opener, and I think that's a really good name for it. So let me bypass everything. We should start to sort of hear what's going on now. So here's with nothing. It's all the same shit, just another We're starting to develop that little bit of sheen, right? Okay, and yet another subtle plugin here. This is an imager, um, and if it'll pull up here, you'll see that the only band that I have doing anything here, everything else is just at, Basically, what an imager does is I can narrow or I can wide different fr frequency bands. So this is like our low end, this is our low mid, this is our mid, and this is our high end. So I'm just adding a 10% width thing to the high end in this case. I've talked about this a lot in the past, but if you don't know, so the lower the frequency, the more mono it sounds. And I always use the sort of like home theater metaphor where like 
when you're setting up your home theater, right, you've got your little speakers, those contain most of your high end and you'll have more of those and they're gonna be placed like very specifically because they're gonna be more directional, right? So at the higher the frequency, the more directional the signal, the lower the frequency, the harder it is to tell exactly where that's coming from, right? So that's why in a home theater metaphor, keeping up with that, you can put the subwoofer of your home theater system almost anywhere you want. So that's why in this case, I went all the way up to the high frequencies and then I added just a little. To me, it adds like a little bit of like three dimensional space provided the mix can tolerate it. This one can, it, there's no harsh frequencies up there or anything. So by spreading them out, it just kind of like makes the mix kind of wrap around your head a little bit more. So why don't we actually just listen to those frequencies that I'm talking about. So I can solo this. Now mind you, any imager is gonna work. Uh, this just so happens to be the Cubase one. They all kind of do the same thing. And then here's bypassed. Again, it's gonna be subtle, but you know, little subtle movements on a good mix make for a great master. And because it's up here in what I call sort of the expensive frequencies, uh, it just helps with that like pro sheen thing. All right, this last plugin isn't actually gonna look like a plugin. I'm gonna bring, or sec I should say second to last plugin before our limiter. Um, so this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is our sixth in the chain and this will be our last in the chain here. This is an external effect. The way those work is you basically set up, so this is a real piece of hardware or it's representing a real piece of hardware. Uh, you just set this stuff up here. Uh, this is my very mu. Uh, this is going out 32. Uh, out 31 and 32 and in 31 and 32 as well. A quick note on the Verimu, it's I think the only piece of gear I ever sold that I regretted and I was using Access Analog to use Verimus all the time. And so you should try that too because Access Analog rules and it's an easy way to use uh, the Manly Verimu. But recently I came across one, I couldn't not buy it and now I'm really happy to have one back in my arsenal in like every mix and master that I've been doing, that I've been running through it, uh, I've been getting really, really nice compliments on my mixes as of late. And it's not entirely because I have a very Mew again, but it's definitely not hurting. So this is essentially gonna work just like any other plugin. Uh, when this is yellow, it's bypassed. And when it's not, it's not bypassed. I, what I love about this is this just glues and holds the mix together. And I know those terms are overused, but I really think it does. For lack of a better term, I just feel like it makes it feel finished. So before I get into limiting, we've done, what do we say? This is one, two, three, four, five, six different plugins. All of them have been pretty subtle, but let's stack these things together now in here before we did any of those things and then after we did them. Cool, it's like way sheenier, it sounds more like a real record now. And now that we've sort of done that, we've controlled all the elements that we wanted to control, time to turn on our limiter, which I'll make extra large here for us to look at. And I like the modern setting. Um, and what I also do, even though this has true intersample peak detection, I still limit it to 0.1 dB on the way out, just, just in case. Cool, yeah, so that's a quick walkthrough. Like I said, I got a lot of compliments on this one. It was on my Instagram. Uh, I recently opened up my mentoring program, my one-on-one -on -one mentoring program for 24 hours. I'm gonna extend that another 24 hours. I had one person who can't do it right now, so that left one spot open. So if you want, I'll drop a link. Uh, feel free to apply. Um, I like to get on the phone with people, see where they're at, and see if this would be a good fit. Uh, and this just seems like a good time to talk about that because it's one of my mentoring students that is now, like I said, full circle moment, like integrating with Alan and I, and it's just a really good feeling. And with that, have a good night, or good morning, or good day, whatever it is. See you later.